Early Life of St. Markella of Hios, from the Great Synoxarian of the Orthodox Church, July. On the 22nd of July, the Holy Church commemorates the Holy Virgin Martyr Markella. Markella, the blessed and pure Bride of Christ, was born at the end of the 15th century. She hailed from the sweet-scented island of Hios, in a village on the hinterland called Volisios. Her parents were among the wealthiest people of the town, and they were Christians. From a young girl, Markella's mother had a great devotion for the Virgin Mary. When Markella's mother first married and moved to her own home, she prayed before the icon of the Theotokos and besought a child. When she conceived and brought forth Markella, the infant brought much joy into the family. Though the mother was devout and reverent, the father was cynical about the church. When Markella was about twelve years old, her mother spoke more at length to her about Christ and his love. In simple language that the child could understand, Markella's mother spoke to her about the incarnation of the Son of God, born of the Virgin. She impressed upon her daughter the importance of emulating the purity of the Panagia, the Holy Virgin Mary. She explained how Christ would come and dwell in those with pure hearts, at other times, she spoke joyfully about the heavenly teachings of the Lord Jesus. She recounted the miracles of his love. With pain and tears, she spoke of his passion, but with a triumphant voice, she taught little Markella about the resurrection. The mother also did not neglect to narrate the lives and contests of the martyrs. She related the stories with all her heart and soul, so that the little girl thought she was actually present. Markella then exclaimed, I like very much what thou art telling me, Mommy, but tell me more. Thou dost seem as beautiful as an angel then. Her mother answered, As thou wilt mature, I shall explain more about our Lord. I will tell thee more about the Panagia and the saints at the appropriate time. Markella's mother was an angel of peace, a faithful guide and a guardian of the maiden's soul and body. Markella deemed her mother to be the best mother in the world. With every passing day, Markella learned more about the faith. Her love deepened for the Lord, the Virgin Mary, the saints, and the struggle for virtue. During Markella's adolescence, however, her mother was visited with a terminal disease. She perceived that her earthly sojourn was coming to a close. Then one day she called Markella to her bedside and said, Tell me, Markella, what happened after the resurrection and burial of the Lord Jesus? She exclaimed, His resurrection. Continuing, the mother asked, And what does this mean for people? Markella said, They too shall rise. Her mother then added, He told the people that I am going to prepare a place for thee in heaven, and I shall come and take thee to my father's house. Markella said, Yes, Mommy. Her mother then asked, Where, therefore, are Christians going after their sojourn on earth? The maiden answered gravely, To the heavens, Mother. Continuing, the mother added, However, however, my little girl, this separation, which is a temporary separation, brings sorrow to loved ones. Markella then said, To whom, Mommy? She said, to a mother and daughter, let us say. I was sad at the leaving of my mother, thy grandmother, my Markella, just as we are sorry whenever some loved one goes away on a faraway trip. Markella said, Yes, but grandmother was old. The mother replied, But not only grandmothers are called to the Lord. He calls mothers also, my love. Markella, gazing intently, said, and mothers? The mother answered, Certainly. Markella then asked, And what do children do then? Her mother calmly answered, If they are little girls who believe and love very much the risen Lord Jesus, who is now with his father, his all-holy mother, and all the saints rejoicing in the heavens, then... Then what do those little girls do, my love, my joy? Markella then asked, Do they cry, Mommy? She said, Cry. 
then stammered. Continuing, she said divertingly, Bring me a little water, my Markella. Markella answered, Yes, Mama. Markella then went to fetch some water. Her mother then turned in prayer, uttering, If it is possible for this cup to pass from me or the child, how shall I leave her as she is? But if this is thy will, O Lord, sanctify her, that I might rejoice eternally in the heavens. Hearken unto me, O my God. It is a Christian mother who supplicates thee. Hearken unto her, O God and Father. Markella then came back into the room carrying a tray with a glass of water. Her mother hugged and kissed her. It would be the final farewell. Then her mother said, Go into the drawing room and read now, my Markella. I have to sleep. But remember everything that will keep thy soul and body as pure as a lily, as the all-immaculate and graceful virgin. Markella left the room. Suddenly her mother looked up and said, I am coming, O Lord. It is Markella for whom I beseech. Then a voice was heard, Leave her to my love. Thou wilt glorify me together with her. Receiving joy, the mother from the depths of her heart said, I thank thee, O Lord Jesus. Then, as she looked upon Markella from afar, she reposed in the Lord. It was only later that her husband found that she had reposed. All of Olissos attended the funeral for that noble lady who was conspicuous for her philanthropic deeds. Markella was then sent temporarily to stay with her aunt. As life at home resumed, the upbringing of Markella was left entirely to her father. Her life with her father was difficult but she bore his cantankerous moods patiently and cheerfully. Markella at length assumed the complete running of the house. However, father and daughter never prayed together. Once, after Markella said her evening prayers, her father said brutishly, Make thy cross and go to sleep. She asked, Do I not have time to light the oil lamp and burn incense before the icons? Her father replied, Those things are done by the church sacristan. My house is not a church with candles, incense, and oil lamps. Leave that. Thou hast exceeded thy mother of blessed memory. Markella then asked, Are prayers and icons, or the Lord Jesus, or Panagia, or the saints excessive? Again he answered, I told thee, my house is not a church. Attend to thy chores and study thy lessons. Markella did not challenge his authority. Her father was so different than her mother. He lacked her sensitivity, logic, faith, and love. He did not have her warmth, joy, and optimism, Markella thought. What shall I do now? My mother is in the heavens watching me from on high. I shall do as she taught me. I shall pour out my troubles in my prayers. My father does not wish me to light the oil lamp and sense the icons as my mother was wont to do. Therefore I will light them both in my soul. And thus Markella prayed and took care of the house. She never forgot her mother's memory, love, and noble ways. For Markella, the Lady Theotokos, was her mainstay. Now Markella's father was pleased with her housekeeping. Moreover, by the time she was sixteen years old, Markella not only performed housework, but also labored outside with her father upon their property. Once he asked her if he had fallen short of her expectations. Answering that she had only one complaint, Markella said, Thou hast ceased attending church. With mother thou didst go. He interrupted and said, But what does it give? Markella said, Faith, hope, joy, patience. He broke in, saying, It is for women with little minds. She said, Does that mean that the men of our village have little minds also? He answered, I am not saying that. Markella continued, I tell thee, Father, take heed, something is not well with thee. God is life. He gives us breath, food, and everything. The father remarked, Philosophies. She said, It is the truth. He retorted, Live as thou dost see. Markella then responded, These things I see and feel and live. Yet her father shrugged and remarked, Youthful enthusiasm. But she said, It is certain wisdom. He then said sternly, Set the food so we can eat. She added, From the good things which the Lord richly bestows. Then he said, 
Markella, stop these useless philosophies. Put out the food. To eat and to drink, that is everything. Since childhood, Markella received a good training from her mother, as this could be seen in her character. She was respectful and pious, and most of all guarded her purity. She avoided associations with girls that were less reserved, and especially with youths, that she might not be harmed spiritually from such company. She had one goal in mind, to achieve all the virtues and become a blameless bride of Christ, so that in the end she would be accounted worthy of the kingdom of the heavens. As she grew older, more so were her virtues multiplied since she spent most of her time worshipping God. She fasted, prayed, and attended all the services. She aided the poor and constantly tried to bring others to the way of God. In short, she tried to keep all the commandments and please God. For her father, she held him in the utmost respect and loved him dearly. She was mindful of the commandment, Be honoring thy father and thy mother. She never ceased to win his favor and comfort him in his sorrow, saying, I, O father, will be in the stead of mother. I will be with thee in thine old age. I will not abandon thee in thy need. I will be there in thy sickness and in all thy sorrows. Now he loved hearing these words from his daughter, and as she grew older, she took on all of her mother's characteristics. Markella had reached the bloom of youth. By her twentieth year, she grew to be an upright woman. Her beauty and shapeliness, together with her virtue and spiritual gifts, made her resemble a terrestrial animal. Her ready smile and kindness captured every fellow villager who received her greeting or her sweet words. She considered herself fortunate, and her orphaned state seemed remote. She loved everyone, but the happiness of the maiden was temporary. This concludes the reading from the great Synoxarian. But what happened to St. Markella next? Her father grew increasingly hostile towards her. Eventually, he was overcome with evil thoughts and began to hate his daughter. One day after realizing the change in her father and understanding his evil intentions, she ran away from home and hid. He began searching all over the island for her and became as a maddened tiger. He finally caught up to her as she hid in a thorned bush near the seashore. He demanded that she come out, but she refused, preferring death to dishonor. Enraged, he lit the bush on fire. The holy maiden rushed out, bleeding from the thorns and burnt by the fire. She began running along the rocky shore, calling out to Christ and Panagia to save her. Slowly her father gained on her, and he was about to catch her when she cried, My Christ, hear my prayer, save my honor, work thy miracle, I beseech thee with all my soul, my mother I can no longer endure, it is better that the earth open and swallow me, O my Christ, hearken to my prayer. The Blessed One closed her eyes and fell to her knees, not having an ounce of strength to go forward even one step. Straight away, a miracle occurred. The rock upon which she collapsed split open and received the, the pure maiden's body up to her waist. In his anger and madness, her brutish father cut off her blessed head and cast it into the sea. Thereupon the Holy One, crowned with both purity and martyrdom, entered into paradise with her Lord, whom she loved more than life. What a contrast we see in St. Markella's parents. Her mother was so full of love and self-sacrifice, and her father was completely engulfed in evil. Her Blessed Mother gives us an example of how to speak to our children about the Lord, His Mother in the Heavenly Kingdom. As she was dying, her only thought was for her beloved child, giving her one last instruction and encouragement, and then finally entrusting her to the mercy of God. In these evil times when so many people have become a St. Markella's father, let us strive to emulate her mother, praying for our own children and all the children of the world, that the Lord would guide and protect them from all harm. O holy St. Markella, pray to God for us. St. Markella's Apolitikion Rose of piety and sprout of heels, we honor with canticles St. Markella, who was beheaded by her father's hand, as she guarded the commandments of Christ, give strength and save from danger us who cry unto you.
Glory to him who gave you strength. Glory to him who crowned you. Glory to him who works through you healings for all the faithful. Amen. 